Half of the fun of any new upcoming Pokemon game comes before you even get a chance to play it, during the time leading up to release, where the fans are full of excitement and discussion about what we could see in the new games. Inevitably, this always results in people trying to pass off their fan-made Pokemon designs as the real thing, and it's been happening since the franchise began. While these Pokemon are fake though, they make for some really good stories when looking back on the pre-release period of older games, so today I thought it would be fun to look at the crazy history of these fake Pokemon that tried to pass themselves off as legit. All of the art that is shown of these fake Pokemon will also be credited in the description below if the actual artist is known. With that said, why don't we go ahead and get right to it. So if you're super old like me and were around during the days of Gen 1, then you might remember the legend of the Poke Gods. Basically, before the internet was the way it is today, information about the Pokemon games had to travel from person to person largely by ear, and with the absolute pandemonium that was caused by things like the Mew glitch, playgrounds everywhere began to spread rumors of other secret Pokemon that could be obtained in the Gen 1 games through various methods. While some of these Poke Gods, like Pika Blue, were actually early reports of Generation 2 Pokemon, like Meryl, others were fabricated entirely, such as the supposed evolutions of Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise, known as Sapsaur, Charcoal, and Rainer. Other Poke Gods include Nido God and Nido Goddess, evolutions of Nido King and Nido Queen, as well as Pika Flare, which actually came from the appearance of Honoguma, a scrapped fire starter that was seen in Pokemon Gold and Silver's 1997 demo, and Pika Bud, which were purported as fire and grass type evolutions of Pikachu and or Raichu. Other Pokemon, such as Butterfree, Beedrill, Raticate, Golduck, Flareon, Gengar, Sandslash, Onix, and even Mewtwo supposedly all had secret evolutions you could somehow obtain in the games, with Mewtwo's being the often talked about Mew 3. These super evolved Pokemon were also tied to a special item, known as the Mist Stone, which could supposedly evolve every single Pokemon in the game, even those who had reached their final stage. These were the kinds of wild rumors that flourished in the pre-internet age, and it only helped to add to Pokemon's popularity. By the time Generation 2 rolled around, you can imagine that the prospect of brand new Pokemon coming to the games only added to the fire of fake rumors and leaks. And while it can be difficult to scrounge up rumors from so long ago, there were some interesting attempts of passing off fake Pokemon as the real thing that we do know of. These three Pokemon, according to Cerebi, were created as part of an April Fool's Day prank in 2002, and they even had in-game dex entries to go along with them, which would have made them especially believable at the time, since this was still prior to the era we're in now, where plenty of fans can make official looking stuff like this, and it's even known in general by other fans that this is possible. Back in the day, if you showed this to a kid or even an older fan, they probably would have believed that it was real without question. Of these three fake Pokemon, the most notable is probably this one. It was known as N Panda and supposedly evolved from Teddy Ursa with the use of a Moonstone. In addition to these Pokemon, there was also one that circulated the internet years after Gold and Silver's release. This Fakemon, known as Kagi no Mushi, was advertised as a scrapped Pokemon that came from Gold and Silver's infamous 1997 Space World demo, before it was leaked. Prior to that big leak, the only information about the demo that we had was the word and fan art of people who actually attended the event where the demo was showcased, which allowed Kage no Mushi's creator, a Twitter user by the name of the Solipsist Owl, to mimic the fan art another attendee had famously drawn, and have it passed around as the real thing. Thanks to the lack of info about the demo, it was widely believed to be the real deal, and was only proven once and for all that it was fake in 2018 when the actual demo leaked in its entirety. 
Gen 3 is another era which, looking back on now, is hard to revisit in terms of these fake leaked Pokemon, due to it still being a little bit before the internet really started to take over. However, we do have a few interesting Pokemon to mention. Coming from the Cerebi archives, the first is this design, which attempted to show what the final evolution of Mudkip was going to look like, and well, I don't know why it turned into a unicorn, but I'm sure it tried its best to fool people, and that's all that matters. We also have these two, which are real and not real at the same time, because they are inaccurate depictions of real Pokemon, being Combuskin and Skitty respectively, which probably would have been made when some info about those Pokemon was out there, but their designs had obviously not been revealed quite yet. And it's also interesting that the cat Pokemon took on more of a Meowth look, which kinda gives it away as not real pretty quickly. Probably the most interesting Gen 3 mon of this bunch though is Korichu. Korichu was a part of a pretty well laid out April Fool's Day prank in 2005, where it was supposedly a brand new addition to a port of Hey You Pikachu that was being put on the Nintendo DS. Interestingly, it actually looks a lot like Shinx, and the timing of its release was also just shortly before Pokemon Diamond and Pearl came out, where Shinx debuted. So could there be some kind of connection there? Probably not, to be honest, but it's a pretty crazy connection and coincidence regardless. Speaking of Gen 4, there were a really good crop of fake leaks and rumors that occurred during this generation. One of the biggest reports when details about Diamond and Pearl first began to emerge was that the starters of the game were going to be Fighting, Dark, and Psychic type instead of the usual Grass, Fire, Water, and thus leaks were made attempting to show what the starters looked like. When it came to the actual starters though, when they were revealed, plenty of people, as you would expect, tried to pass some fake evolutions off as the real thing, including this various assortment of attempts, and well, let's just be glad that none of these actually ended up being real, although this fake Turtwig evolution does actually look a bit like Beta Torterra, so that's kinda interesting. Other attempted fake leaked Pokemon were this group, notably including a pre-evolution of Lucario, which did happen, just not like this thankfully, and also a Magmar evolution, which happened as well, but this one was created, according to Cerebi, based on the assumption that there was going to be an Electabuzz evolution as well, which of course did happen. So I guess you have to at least give the creators of these some credit for using the context of the time to try and add to their credibility. Another pretty infamous Pokemon, meanwhile, that was heavily rumored at the time was a Sky Form for Regigigas. This was another one of those classic playground rumor situations, as since there were murmurings of a Sky Form Pokemon that was going to go along with the new movie at the time, Giratina and the Sky Warrior, and since Regigigas was set to appear in that movie, the idea that a Sky Form Regigigas actually existed began to circulate throughout the community. Of course, it was Shaman who ultimately received this sky form, debunking this idea, but also forever cementing it in the history books of Pokemon rumors and leaks. The Unova games took another step in the frequency and intensity of fake Pokemon leaks, as this is when the whole fake Coral Coral leak idea really started to become the way we know it today, and the quality of these leaks only got better and better as time went on. There was this leak claiming to be what the new starters looked like, and there was also this starter leak as well. If it looks a little off to you, it largely has to do with the fact that Pokemon revealed the silhouettes of the Unova starters before officially revealing their designs, which of course caused artists and leakers to run rampant, and this particular leak attempted to put faces on those aforementioned silhouettes, except they mixed up the typings of Oshawa and Tepig, and overall just did not end up that close to the real thing. There were plenty of other standard Pokemon that were supposedly coming to the games that were fake as well, like these on screen, and if you can believe it, there were even more attempts to leak fake starter Pokemon as well. This had to do with the emergence of Pokemon Black and White 2, and the fact that they were the first proper sequels to a Pokemon game ever. 
Fake leakers had a field day with this, naturally, and one leak claimed that we would be getting a brand new set of starter Pokemon in these sequels, which included this grass owl and water platypus that you can see in this fake magazine scan, as well as a fire-type elephant. And while this magazine scan is very well made, at the end of the day, it was just a little too good to be true. By the time Pokemon X and Y rolled around, we were full-on into modern leak territory, and the Kalos games did not slow down on the onslaught of fake Pokemon attempting to be real. There were fake Pokemon attempting to pass themselves off as the starting bird and bug of the region, which actually look really cool. There were pre-evolutions of other Pokemon purported, like this drowsy pre-evolution. There were a bunch of Pokemon that attempted to actually show themselves within gameplay, trying to use the new 3D approach to the games to add to the legitimacy, because that couldn't possibly be faked, right? You obviously had the usual starter leaks as well, and there was even talk this time around of new types being added. Because the fairy type was indeed added in this generation, there were plenty of rumors surrounding this topic, with many believing that two new types would be added, coinciding with the box art legendaries Xerneas and Eveltal. As opposed to Fairy, many thought we would finally see the oft-requested light and sound types, because with no other information, they seemed to line up with the two Kalos legendaries. There were even reports that we would be getting a whole second half to the Pokedex added as well. With Kalos only introducing 72 new Pokemon, many found that odd, and one fake leak attempted to explain this discrepancy. When Pokemon Z was still being hotly rumored, one leak claimed that as part of the games, the southern portion of Kalos would be opened up, and this would also open up a new part of the Pokedex, which was broken up into three different sections in the Kalos games, so this southern Kalos Pokedex was supposedly going to add about 70 new Pokemon, including the newly revealed Magearna, which admittedly does make way more sense for Kalos than it does Alola, which hadn't yet been revealed at the time. I can remember not necessarily believing this one one way or the other, but being all about it, because having an enhanced game adding a bunch of new Pokemon like that just seemed like a really cool and fresh idea, which also contributed to its believability as well, since at the time we were fresh off of Pokemon Black and White 2, so many were expecting something unexpected for the third Kalos game that sadly never happened at the end of the day. When Pokemon Z didn't happen and Sun and Moon came about instead, more rumors and leaks popped up along with it. Probably the best fake leak that was also the most believable occurred prior to the Alola starters being revealed. While the games were revealed in February of 2016, nothing about them was formally shown off until around May of that year, which obviously brought about tons of rumors. One of them attempted to show what the player characters, starters, and even legendaries of the game looked like through a masterful fake Korokoro leak. The leak, created by Zerudez on DeviantArt, really went the whole nine yards by appearing as a magazine leak, having masterful artwork as well as Pokemon and character designs, and even screenshots of gameplay featuring the starters. There was a ton of debate about the veracity of this leak before it was outed as fake, and it is probably one of, if not the best fake Pokemon leak of all time. However, it was not the only leak that existed at that time. There were also plenty of fake leaks surrounding the new Alola forms, and ones that were supposedly coming to the games, like Alolan Nidoking, Alakazam, and even a water-type Alolan Arcanine. There were even rumors of a new Eeveelution coming to the games to coincide with the release of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Once the official starter Pokemon were revealed, there were also plenty of leaks of what their final and middle stages would look like, including these, which were obviously fake, but also terrifying at the same time. And to add the icing on the cake, there were even fake starters that were leaked after the names of the Pokemon were leaked, but not the actual designs themselves, amongst trademarks for the games, and people were able to decipher what the starters would be based on before they were officially revealed.
And most recently, we of course have Generation 8. There were plenty of fake leaks prior to this generation even being revealed, as several starter Pokemon claiming to be the real thing during the lead up to Sword and Shield's reveal were unleashed onto the internet, and although they were fake, they all looked fantastic. Once Pokemon Sword and Shield were officially revealed though, the leaks for the game started literally that same day. There were leaks that claimed to reveal concept art of the evolutions of Grookey, Scorbunny, and Sobble, and there was one really notable leak from 4chan that claimed that armored evolutions would be a thing in these games, and armored Charizard, Mewtwo, Flygon, and Zeraora were all coming to the games as well. This same leak also claimed that the newly released Meltan would tie into Armored Evolution somehow, and that the legendaries of the game were a metal snake and wooden horse. Now, this sounds super fake now, but the reason why this leak was given so much attention at the time is because it was posted about a week before the games were revealed, and it claimed that the games would be called Pokemon Sword and Shield, and the new region would be based on Great Britain. Britain, both of which were true, and now after the fact, it calls into question whether this is all a coincidence or if this person actually knew legitimate information but also threw in fake information to avoid being targeted for leaking the game. Meanwhile, there were of course other rumors that a new evolution would be coming to the games as well, like this Steel-type evolution, and this time around, these evolution rumors were hotter and more believable than ever, because many believed that since new evolutions had always been introduced in even-numbered generations, that Generation 8 would finally be the time to get a new one, although that unfortunately did not happen and still has not happened to this point. Additionally, another one of the most impressive leaks of all time occurred during this generation as well, as a fake bug dragon type Pokemon made its way onto the internet claiming to be the real thing, but instead of the usual artwork or even screenshot, it used actual gameplay footage of a fully 3D modeled Pokemon, whose design was also very well made and was complete with idle animations, making it look extremely extremely legitimate. In this case though, the creator of the leak, Throw Rock on YouTube, came out shortly after the leak was publicized to confirm it was fake, and also how they went about making it. The fact that this was fake was a shame for sure, because the Pokemon looks amazing, and the leak does too, and I definitely would have had one of these on my Galar team had it actually been real. And that was a brief history of fake Pokemon leaks. I obviously didn't cover everything that's ever been rumored, so if there's something that you remember hearing about that I didn't mention, be sure to leave it in the comments below, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're new for more Pokemon content all the time, and you can also support the channel further if you would like by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by watching my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, both of which which help out a ton and are extremely appreciated. With that said, I will see you guys very soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, thanks for watching, and I will smell you guys later.